Hello, and welcome to the Carla Knits Podcast. This is episode 31. Uh, today is Friday, October 29th, and I am so happy to be back this week with you. Uh, thank you to all uh, returning viewers for coming back, and if you're new, thank you so much for stopping by. You can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as CB Crafty Girl, and we do have a podcast group on Ravelry for Carla Knits uh, and links for all of those things as well as patterns and projects and yarns will be linked in the show notes down below. Uh, so uh, speaking of our podcast group on Ravelry, we haven't really had anything going on uh, since our last make along. What was that? Our how or our merry make along for making uh, Christmas things? Is that right? <laughs> was that our last make along? So I would like to uh, start a new make along. I had asked uh, last week if if people would be interested because things are a little quiet in our group. So um, I, I love I love when things are are going on and people are excited about making things. So I had asked if people would be interested in a. Christmas sock along or something to do with Advent and um, a couple people, well, several of you did respond and I appreciate those of you who did respond um, on YouTube comments uh, if you were interested or not. So some people were interested in Christmas socks and in Advent make along. So we are just going to do one big make along and I am going to call it uh, Holly Jolly Mal. So make along and I'm going to be hosting it hosting it in the Ravelry group. That just keeps it a little bit easier for me. Uh, so there will be a chatter thread and a finished object thread, which I will be opening uh, shortly. Uh, the make along will begin on November 1st. So that's Sunday already, November 1st, and we'll go through January 15th. Um, and so this will be an all encompassing, uh, Christmas and Advent or winter holidays. Any, any holiday you celebrate in December is fine. Anything festive. Uh, so it could be Christmas socks for yourself. So I know, you know, I am, I am getting ready to cast on some Christmas socks with some Christmas yarn. Um, so anything like that. I know a number of people have Advent calendars coming uh, it, uh, for December to start and December projects with those Advent calendars. So anything you are making with that uh, would be fine. Uh, in the chatter group, you know, I would love to hear what projects you are thinking about making uh, during this time or with your, specifically with your Advent calendars. Um, it could be still Christmas gifts that you are making for people. <laughs> that would be fine. Um, so I'm going to say no whips allowed unless they are under 50%. And they do have to be specifically geared toward the Christmas this, this time of year. <clears throat> so uh, Christmas, Advent, winter themed, if you celebrate any of the other holidays, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, any of those are just fine to participate in this mail. So again, it's going to be called the Holly Jolly Mail, hosted on Ravelry, and I will be pulling prize from the finished object thread and the chatter thread uh, following that January 15th deadline. A physical prize or prizes will be open to U.S. residents only, uh, but please feel free, to, feel free to participate if you are from out of the United States, I will just gift you um, a pattern prize of your choice on Ravelry up to a certain dollar amount. So I'm still working on, on figuring out prizes for that. So I think, I th hope that is all um, that I need to say about that holly jolly make along, but I'm really excited now that Halloween is almost done. My thoughts are turning towards all things Christmassy. So <laughs> really excited about that. And just one more thing about Advent. Uh, we did have a 12 skeins of Christmas mini skein swap in our group. So for those of you who have participated or are participating, uh, 
if for some reason you did not connect with your swap partner um, or if things went wrong, please do let me know because I do want people to um, have fun and, and receive mini skeins who, who wanted to. So please, if you did sign up for that and had any trouble, please do reach out to me um, in, a, in a message on Ravelry. But I hope, I hope those of you who uh, did partner up have talked with your partner and maybe are already uh, have received your box. I did receive my box, so I'm really excited. Um, I partnered with uh, Tiffany of the Woolen Homestead, so I was really excited that she uh, agreed to be my partner. So I have already received that package and she received her package and I confess I really really want to open it but I'm gonna be good and wait till December so <laughs> all right I think that is all about the holly jolly make along and about advent uh going into the knitting portion knitting and crochet I first wanted to share this hat again I did share it last week uh, it does have its pom-pom on this week, and it is it is just a snap-on, so I could use that other pom-pom uh, that I had chosen um, as well, but I think this is so sweet, and the reason I'm showing this again is because this hat pattern comes out today. It is published today on Ravelry. This is called the Autumn Crush Hat by Julie of Twin Stitches Designs, and I will have it linked down below. This was a really fun quick color work hat pattern. It has a lovely cable ribbing detail here and then this lovely color work. And I did not buy any new yarns for this. I simply used, it's a DK weight hat. I simply used some DK, DK weight leftovers uh, to knit this up. And I think it turned out really fun and, and bright. So uh, if you like color work or want to try it for the first time, I would highly suggest this beautiful pattern. All right, on to some finished objects. I finished my betwixt shawl, my Halloween spooky shawl. Did you catch the, the little skull <laughs> on it? It is a little spooky. <laughs> so uh, when I saw this pattern um, come out on Instagram, I just thought, I like it. It's so creepy and crazy and not me but I really want to make it. So um, this shawl, the Betwixt shawl, is by Amba O'Brien, and it comes in two different weights, a fingering weight and DK weight. I made the DK weight version, and I will go ahead and take this off right now so I can whoops, share it with you a little better. Uh, so here it is. You can see it is a fairly long long shawl it did block out fairly long so really good for twisting around and wearing it scarf like around the neck so this gray and blue portion is mosaic knitting with slip stitches so those are slip stitched flowers on there and those two colors the gray is from noble character crafts uh, it was part of a gray uh, five skein fade set in which i only used uh, the four I believe that's correct. And then this was the darkest charcoal gray. The blue is by Jojo Land. It's splattered ash in the Alaskan blue colorway. And then this gorgeous spooky lace <laughs> lace border with the, the skeleton skulls. Uh, this beautiful yarn I absolutely love. This is by Maker's Haven in the Gust of Wind colorway. So let me show you and hopefully you can see those spooky skulls on there. Yeah, so I'm really, really, really excited with how, how this shawl turned out. Yeah, so I'm going to pause a minute so I can go put the shawl back on. All right, back and hopefully uh, styled okay with the shawl. Sometimes it's really hard to, to style shawls, um, particularly the asymmetrical ones. Um, but this one is long enough. It's, it's really fun. I did not this end. Uh, so I am excited to wear this on Halloween. Uh, it's, it's a chilly forecast. I think it's going to be down to the 
40s, I believe, for uh, trick-or-treating time. So it will be fun to have this on. Uh, so this goes into my next Halloween themed finished object. And I did finish my Halloween socks. Aren't they fun? Oh, I absolutely love this yarn. So this is, see if I can hold these, okay. So this yarn is by Night Owl Fibers uh, in her Spooky Fun 2021 colorway. Uh, and I absolutely love it. And I thought I had done a pretty good job of matching uh, the, the stripes at the beginning. But if you notice, my toes definitely did not turn out the same way. Uh, I'm trying to think. This was my this was my first one, and this was my second one. So I'm not really sure. Uh, you know, just a little bit off, um, but I don't think it really matters. <laughs> They're so crazily and happily and Halloween trick or treaty color striped that I I don't think that mismatching toe or not perfectly uh, matched toe is going to matter. So I did finish my Halloween socks. I am really, really excited to have these done. Uh, yeah, so I will be wearing these socks on Halloween along with my shawl. So now that Halloween is almost here, my thoughts are getting excited about some of those other Christmas holidays coming up, but I'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, good unfinished objects this week. I have a third finished object. This is the hexagon baby blanket. Hopefully you can see that. Uh, last week I had, um, I had shown that I had two skeins of this yarn crocheted into this blanket and I had um, said when I put the third one in, I was going to stop and show you guys to see what you thought if it was a big enough baby blanket. But I, I crocheted that in there and I think that's absolutely a very decent size for a baby blanket. So that took three skeins of yarn. I had six. It's Universal Yarns Cotton Supreme Waves in the Heliotrope colorway. And I wasn't sure if I should block this crochet blanket, but I thought, you know what? I want to see how it washes up. I'm going to give it to a new to be mom. So I did, and it washed up so nice. And if it is possible, the yarn got even softer. So I absolutely love this yarn. And thanks again so much to Frida and Mallory uh, for giving me the yarn as part excuse me, as part of their knit along of the Autumn League pullover. I absolutely love this yarn. And now I will have three skeins, I do have three um, skeins remaining so I can knit, <laughs> crochet, excuse me, crochet another baby blanket at some time in the future. So it was really fun uh, to crochet this. I used uh, a tutorial on YouTube by the Keep Calm and Crochet channel for a crochet hexagon. So I had never um, done a hexagon blanket before, but this was this was really fun. So I enjoyed it and I, I can absolutely see myself making this pattern again. So that is my third finished object. So that is pretty good. Going on, I only have two whips this week because I did finish <laughs> did finish three projects. So we are moving right along here. My first work in progress is my uh, yeah Christmas sock. It is a Christmas sock for uh, my son's fiance Kelsey. And sticking with spooky theme right now. See, I guess I must like some spooky things because I found this stitch marker. I don't even remember getting that, but it's a tiny skeleton. Can you see that? <laughs> kind of fun. So where he is hanging from, that is where I was last week. So very little done last week. And this is as far as I have gotten. So I've gotten the heel turn and I'm working to 
heel turn and gusset and I'm working down the foot. Um, I This is a self-striping DK weight yarn by the Freckled Whimsy. And I did do something that I'm not really happy about. Uh, after I finished this part and went to pick up stitches um, along the side, I, I continued with that dark purple. And so I have this one weird dark purple line here, which, which really does not look great. But I, I got too far along and then I kind of noticed it and it started bugging me last night, but I was already, already well on my way. So I'm like, does it bug me enough to pull it back? I'm saying no <laughs> because it's it's just a sock. So I think I think it is okay. Um, I did I did cut the yarn after that part uh, so I could continue across the front of the leg with that um, kind of sandy goldy brown colorway. So what I should have done was started started it there when I started picking up stitches. So. I will know to do some yarn management that way on on the next sock and I don't I don't know that I'm gonna try to make these match exactly I, I don't think I am I will I will probably do something similar where I do part of a color as the part as the start of the cuff but I don't think I'm gonna exactly um, go ahead and match these um, but this yarn is so so very nice I love how it is knitting up the colorway is spicy, um, so that's kind of fun. The light bulb stitch markers are notating every 10 rounds, so just uh, to help me with my counting and how long uh, to knit it. Um, I knit Kelsey a pair of socks last year, so I do have her size, and I have seen her wear those socks, so I know I've got, I do have the right size for her, so I'm gonna continue on with that. So that is sock number one for Kelsey for Christmas and this is my last Christmas gift that I have that I am intending to make um, so I have made a few gifts throughout the years part of the year part of the um, Christmas make along and everything so I believe this is my last Christmas gift to work on so that that feels pretty good that feels pretty good so um, didn't want to have too many projects going on as we get into the holidays so I wanted to just have some fun with some holiday knitting but my second my second work in progress is a new cast on this week and it is a sweater uh, this is um, let me show you the progress I will hold this up so actually this is really a decent amount of of progress for a first week on this uh, so this is a bottom-up sweater and hopefully you can see the fun panel in the front with the interesting detail it has um, two a cable on either side and then a fun texture in the middle uh, you might be thinking this is a very different choice for Carla to knit in this color but I I, I did decide that I wanted something a little more neutral, um, and so I, I chose this. When I saw this pattern, I, I really fell in love with it. Uh, this is Lola Chic by Annie Lupton, and it is a very cropped sweater, uh, which I will not be making it cropped. Uh, I believe in the directions. I'm not giving anything away, but from the bottom up, you knit eight inches and then you know, divide uh, for continuing up, and I will not be knitting only eight inches. I probably will do at least at least twelve um, before continuing on up. Uh, but I just I have a couple of skirts that I think this would just be a really nice neutral pairing with. Um, I have so many patterns in my closet that I figured you know this was something very neutral that could go with with different things and still very interesting because it has this gorgeous texture in it but it's it's a neutral color that could go with many things the yarn that i am using is barocco vintage dk and i don't believe i have used this yarn before 
Well, I know I haven't used it in a sweater project. I No, I don't think so. Um, but this is a DK weight yarn. Uh, obviously, Barocco Vintage DK, sorry. Uh, no colorway name, but it's 2101. It's just a creamy off-white colorway. So I did, I did swatch for this project. Um, so that has been going on behind the scenes. I guess I didn't share that I was swatching for a sweater. Um, I guess I wasn't entirely sure when I was going to start start the sweater, but um, yeah, it's I've kind of been itching to to start this. So I did swatch uh, two times, and I ended go ended up going up two needle sizes, which isn't terribly surprising because I am a very tight knitter. So. Um, I'm, I'm up two needle sizes from the recommended, um, but I think it is working out lovely so far. Yeah, I, I don't know if I will, I guess I don't have a certain deadline for this yet because I know that, uh, the next couple months get, get pretty busy, uh, for everyone. So, I'm just going to try to enjoy the process, although I'd love to have it done like now because I love that sweater. And the, the other sweater I'm really itching to cast on is that um, Bean and Olive by Andrea Mowry. I showed a while ago I have kind of a grayish yarn and then a really bright pop of color, um, pinkish red by Dragon Horde Yarns. So that probably will be the next sweater probably on my needles. But don't you just scroll through Instagram and Ravelry and see so many beautiful projects. It's so hard to focus on one thing because there's so many beautiful things out there. It's a wonderful problem to have. So those are my two whips for today. Uh, I'm going to share a couple yarns. Sorry, let me grab these. I'll just pull my basket over here. So... Uh, I am going to cast on a new pair of socks, uh, Christmas themed. So as part of my participation in our Holly Jolly Mail. So I have three skeins of yarn here. Uh, these are not new. They have been in my stash. These have been for a couple of years. This one came in last year and I will just put it out there. I wonder if you, if you, if you have an opinion which one I should cast on. Uh, this one is by Bumblebee, yeah, Bumblebee Acre Farms, and it's the Red Barn in Winter Colorway. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh, I absolutely love that. But since it talks about winter, I was like, well, you could also work on it in January too. So I don't know if I should cast that one on. Or this is another Bumblebee Acre Farm in the Victorian Christmas colorway. And there are so many just beautiful colors in that skein of yarn. So thinking about those, or I have this lovely sock set by Teeny Button Studio. And obviously this is a Carla color but to me it doesn't really scream Christmas but it is one of her Christmas colorways and it's called Merry and Bright um, and this is this is really super fun too so <laughs> I, I'm not sure um, you know I was leaning towards this and then I took this out last night and I'm like ooh, now I really like that so let me know what you think I should cast on. You know, ultimately I will choose, of course, but I'm curious which one would you cast on? So, and those are only a couple of my Christmassy yarns, but these are the ones that kind of spoke to me right now. So I pulled those out of my stash. So I do plan on casting that on very soon. So with that, I guess we have come to the end. Um, not a whole lot to chatter about. I guess it's been a pretty busy week. We had a choir concert for my daughter on Monday and she surprised us by singing a a solo and she did a great job and had a lot of applause. She sang a song by Olivia Rodrigo. Um, just really, really surprised us. It was a nice surprise. Almost, almost made mom, mom cry. So that was really, really nice. And then on Tuesday, our son Ryan, who lives in Kearney, he came home for a visit. So uh, we invited Aaron and Kelsey over too. So I had all my kids here and we had supper together and just had a nice time visiting. And um, 
I made pumpkin bars for dessert, so that was that was really fun. Um, then just work and, and school and everything, and looking forward to, to Halloween and passing out candy for the trick-or-treaters. I got a pumpkin for Jenna, but I don't know if she's gonna carve it this year. She may have some other plans. Um, she's also busy with work. I don't know if I ever shared. She did get a job. Um, she was a lifeguard this summer, and then she did get a job at a restaurant uh, about 25 minutes from here so she she is busy with that so I know she does does have some work this weekend so I think I think that is all from me today so I hope that you are all doing well I hope you are enjoying fall I have been enjoying the beautiful fall weather here some of the beautiful colors we had a lovely day that was all rain which we so desperately needed and it just felt like fall it was wonderful and it's chilly again today so um i absolutely love this time of year so um enjoying snuggling inside um wearing the hand knit socks i have another pair of halloween ish socks on right now um so enjoying starting to wear uh the socks uh, so I hope that you are all well. I hope that you are enjoying whatever crafty thing you are working on. I hope you have a fun Halloween if you are celebrating or celebrating through your kids or grandkids. Hope you have a fun weekend and I will be back with you really soon. Thanks guys. Take care. Bye-bye.